What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the real-time rendering solution contained inside of V-Ray 5. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so historically, the way that rendering in V-Ray worked is you would basically go through here and you would run a singular render um, of your image. So what you would do is you'd click on the button, it would render out the image, and then if there were any changes that you needed to make, you'd have to go back and render that again, right? So let's say we were to rotate this image a little bit inside of SketchUp and we wanted to re-render this, we'd have to go back and click the button again in order to have it update and give us a new view, which could be really time consuming. Now there is the interactive rendering built inside of V-Ray. So if you were to click in here and render with V-Ray interactive, this would render every time that you rotate around in your scene, right? It's re-rendering your scene over and over again. But the problem is you are still sitting and waiting for results. So I can't actually like step into this and move around. It's basically a still image that's being generated um, inside of the V-Ray frame buffer. And so with a V-Ray vision though, what's happening is my results are changing in real time. So I can actually move the sunlight around in real time. I can make changes in real time other things like that. And we're gonna go in, we're gonna add some materials and other things like that. But you can see how this is much more interactive. So I can use the W, A, S, and D keys to actually move around in my rendering, or I can also orbit around the scene too. So let's take a closer look at the way that this works. All right, so first off, let's talk about how to open up V-Ray Vision. So if you look in the V-Ray for SketchUp menu bar right here, notice how there's an option in here for start V-Ray Vision. And so if you click on the button for start V-Ray Vision, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up a window right here that's gonna allow you to navigate around inside of your scene. All right, so let's switch into a side-by-side -side mode. So I'm going to split my screen. I'm gonna split my screen so I have SketchUp on the left-hand side and V-Ray Vision on the right-hand side. And notice how I can navigate around my model inside of SketchUp and my view will also change inside of V-Ray Vision. However, if you wanted to explore around yourself, you could come in here and you can either um, click and hold your right mouse button and uh, drag up and down in order to zoom in and out, or click and hold your left but mouse button in order to orbit. You can also switch to first person navigation mode. So when you do that, when you click in here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to move around like this was a game engine, right? So I can use the W, A, S, and D keys in order to move around, as well as the Q and E to go up and down inside my scene. And then I can hold the left mouse button in order to look around. So you can either do your navigation based on what's shown in SketchUp, or you can actually navigate around yourself inside of this view. And so real quick, let's take a look at some of our settings. And so if we click on the gear, right here, notice how there's gonna be a number of different options in here that you can adjust. So these are all gonna to have to do with what's shown inside of your scene. So for example, let's say that you wanted a little bit better performance, you could bring your shadow quality down a little bit. And so what that means is that means that it's not gonna use quite as much processing power to generate your shadows. Your quality will be a little bit lower, but your performance will be a little bit better. So other things in here like anti-aliasing. So if we do the anti-aliasing, notice how if we look at like the corner right here. So what the anti-aliasing is gonna do is it's gonna come in here and it's gonna get rid of these jagged edges. So if I click on this, notice how this smooths out this edge right here. Um, so if you do want better edges um, and less rough edges, then you can turn the anti-aliasing on. So exposure is gonna be another important thing that's in here. So you can turn on or off auto exposure. So depending on what you wanna do. Um, notice how if you turn auto exposure on and you feel like things are a little bit dark, in your scene, you can also use this EV compensation in order to bring those up. So you can adjust those things in here in order to adjust the way this is going to look. So there's some other things about your movement and other things like that that you can get into. We're not gonna worry too much about that for right now, um, other than note that you can adjust your sensitivity and fly speed. One other thing is notice if you check the box for high quality Cosmos assets and you bring assets in from the Chaos Cosmos library, um, what this is gonna do is it's gonna use the highest level of detail for those. So you can use very high levels of detail um, when those are rendered out, but it is gonna take additional computer power in order to render those out. So um, those are just options that you have in here. Now let's take a look at what happens when we make changes inside of SketchUp. So let's say for example, that we want to apply some materials 
maybe from the V-Ray material library right here. So what I'm gonna do, and sorry, I'm trying to fit this all on one page, but what I'm gonna do right here is let's say I wanted to apply a concrete material to these walls inside of SketchUp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my wall object right here, and we're gonna click into the concrete, and notice how there's options in here for different kinds of concrete. Well, let's say that we wanted to use one of the simple concretes over here. Well, you could just right click on this and click on the button to apply to selection. Well, notice how when I make that change, that change is not only reflected in SketchUp, it's also reflected inside of V-Ray Vision. So the changes that you make inside of V-Ray Vision are going to be real time. This can be really helpful if you're doing things like looking at different materials and how they look inside of your scene. Notice how I can just come in here and just apply the different concrete materials from this library really quickly in order to get different looks. And so not only can you apply materials in real time using um, the built-in V-Ray material library, you can also use the Chaos Cosmos library. So, and I made a video about this, which I will link to in the notes down below, but let's say that you wanted a concrete or asphalt material from the Chaos Cosmos library. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the Cosmos button and that's gonna pop up the Cosmos browser. And remember, you can go in here and you can find things like vehicles and furniture and vegetation as well as materials. And so let's say we wanted to apply an asphalt material to our ground right here. Well, all we would have to do is go into our materials and I've already downloaded one, so we're just gonna bring that one in. What we wanna do is we wanna click on this button right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna import the asset from Chaos Cosmos or into your active materials in your scene. Now. If I go into my materials manager, notice how that asphalt gray right here is gonna show up in that list. So it's not contained inside of the V-Ray material library that's built on your computer. This was actually brought in from Chaos Cosmos. But if I was to right click on this, click on the button for apply to selection, notice how that's going to apply that material to your ground right here as well as in your scene over here. And we, we can use this to quickly apply the high quality materials from Chaos Cosmos into our scene. So let's say for example that I wanted a ground material like this grass right here. I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna import that asset. And then once I import it, I'm gonna go into my V-Ray materials editor. I'm going to find my grass and I'm gonna apply it right here. So we can use that in order to quickly apply the grass material to our scene as well. And so let's say that we wanted to bring in not only materials, but also context models, right? Because high quality context models can be really important. So let's say for example, that we wanted to bring a car model in and place it right here. So we're gonna jump back. I've already downloaded a car and I wanna bring that into my scene. And so I want you to notice what happens when we bring that into SketchUp what happens inside of V-Ray Vision. So if I was to take this car and click on the button right here, if I was to click on this little green button, notice how I can bring this car in and place it in my scene. And so when I click, notice how, in addition to this showing up in SketchUp, this is also going to load inside of V-Ray Vision. And if I look at this car right here, and we may bump our exposure back down just a bit, maybe something like this. But notice how this car is getting brought in as a lightweight proxy model over here, but then a detailed model inside of V-Ray Vision. So what that means is that means that we can have a lightweight SketchUp scene over here that we can explore in real time on the right hand side of our page. So we can use this in order to really quickly create realistic renderings using context models. And so we could also do this with the scatter function. So we've got this green space over here. Well, what I want to do is I want to scatter some objects in here using um, a Chaos Cosmos vegetation piece. So we're going to go back into our 3D models. I'm going to go to my downloaded 3D models. And let's say I wanted to place a bunch of these purple willows in here like this. So I'm just going to bring a purple willow in. And I'm gonna scale that down because that's gonna come in way too big inside of my scene. So I'm gonna scale it down over here. Notice how the changes that I'm making on the left-hand side are also being reflected over here. But I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna place it so that it's on the ground. And so what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna select this surface. Well then, I wanna click on the button for scatter over selection. Well, what that's gonna do is that's going to add a scatter modifier that you can find 
inside of the V-ray geometry section right here. So notice how scatter is now associated with this surface right here. Well, what we want to do is we want to add guests to this. And so in this case, what I want to do is I want to go select the purple willow right here and then click into my scatter and click on the button for add guests. And so when I click on the button for add guests, what that's going to do is that's going to scatter this object based on these settings right here um, inside of my scene. So notice how these purple willows are being scattered all over the surface. Well, the cool thing about this is if we jump back into V-Ray Vision like this, notice how those are all being scattered in here. You can see them all in real time. And so let's say that I was to adjust my density up. So instead of one, let's say I wanted this to be two. And we might do this with more of like a grass material. But um, I'm going to bump my, my density up to two. Well, notice how when I bump my density up, these right here bumped up as well. So you can also use the seed function to randomize where those objects are going to go. And this is going to take just a second to refresh, but notice how those changes are being reflected inside of V-Ray Vision. And then I can also fly around. I can look at them a little bit closer, other things like that. And we may want to check the box for high quality Cosmos assets. Notice how when we do that, it's going to reload the scene, but those are going to get loaded in with more detail now inside of your scene. So if we zoom in and look at these, you can see how they're going to be really high resolution. And you can fly around and look at them in real time. So you can actually see the effects of the changes that you're making. Let's go ahead and drop a couple trees in here real quick from the Cosmos library. So again, that's really easy to do because all we have to do is just open up the Cosmos library, pick our tree, and place it just like this. All right, so one cool feature that they added in V-Ray 5.2 is let's say that you wanted to add grass to the surface right here. Well, previously the V-Ray fur implementation didn't really work here, but what we can do now is we can add a V-Ray fur object right here to this object. What that's going to do is inside of your V-Ray asset editor, you're now going to have an object in here for fur. Well, what you need to do is you need to make sure the word grass is in this name. So let's say we wanted to call this fur underscore grass like this and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to allow V-Ray to recognize that this is supposed to be grass and it's going to render it in the scene. Now notice how that change hasn't been made in here. What I found is you need to reload V-Ray Vision. So if I just close it and open it up again, then now there's going to be grass on that surface where we applied that V-Ray fur. So you can use this in order to create renderable grass in your real-time renderings really quickly. So you can see how now your grass is being rendered out in this location. So say you didn't want all these bushes and you just wanted to apply a grass to that surface, that's an easy way to do that. All right, so just for a second, let's talk about lighting. So notice how in our scene right now, it's a certain time of day with a certain shadows, right? But if you hold the shift key and click and drag your left mouse button, notice how you can adjust both the height of the sun by dragging up and down, as well as the direction of the sun by dragging left and right. So you can fully control the direction of the sunlight in your scene. So in addition to being able to adjust the artificial environment lighting, if you're to drag this all the way down, notice how this switches to a night scene, but you could also bring in artificial lights from V-Ray's artificial light library. So things like this sphere light, and notice how these are going to update automatically inside of V-Ray Vision as well. So if you do want to do something with more like artificial lighting, you can adjust that inside of your scene, and it's going to adjust inside of V-Ray Vision. All right, so in addition, we can also adjust the way that the overall scene looks using the color corrections option right here. And so you've got an option here. If you want more of a contrast look, you can apply this aces curve option right here, but you can also come in here and adjust things like your overall exposure, as well as things like your contrast. So the difference between your lights and darks, notice how if I drag this to the left, I'm getting more of a gray look. The more I drag this to the right, the more contrast I'm getting between those light and dark um, portions of my scene. So you can also adjust the amount of color saturation that you have in here, as well as your color temperature if you want this to be a warmer or a cooler image. So those are going to give you different feels. And what you might do is you might adjust these sliders just a bit and then save them. So if you click on the save button, 
you can save this in a folder as a vision color correction file. So for this one, I could say like warm colors and click on save. Well then, if I was to reset this and I wanted to load that, I would just go find that file. I would just load it and it's gonna bring it in automatically. So you can use that in order to save your different color corrections for use in the future. All right, so I've got my color correction selected. Now let's say we wanted to export an image. So there's a button right here for output that's gonna allow us to export an image. And so we can either set this to be an image, an image sequence or a video. In this case, we're just going to worry about the image. We're gonna set a location by clicking on the folder. And then you can set your resolution to be either whatever the vision window is or from project. In this case, we wanna go ahead and we wanna leave this from the vision window. Notice if you wanted this to be higher resolution, you could also set the size multiplier to make this a bigger image. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at like 1.15, maybe something like that. Um, and I'm gonna click on export. What that's gonna do is that's gonna export this image to the folder you selected, and you can open it just by clicking on it. So you can use this in order to export this. You can kind of play around with that a little bit too um, with your different settings. Um, exporting these images is really fast, which is really cool. All right, so let's say we wanted to export an animation. So let's say that I had, um, really I'm just gonna set up this scene right here. And then let's say we wanted this to fly around over here. So something like this, right? We'll make it very simple. I'm just gonna add an extra scene. Um, and then I'm also gonna go into my scene manager real quick, and I'm going to uncheck the box for include in animation. So now my animation is literally just an animation between this view and this view right here. Well then, what you need to do is first off, you need to go into your V-Ray asset editor under the settings right here, and you want to check the little box here for animation like this. And note that when you make that change, you may have to restart V-Ray Vision. But now if I click on this, notice how there's an option for an image sequence or a video. In this case, we're gonna do a video right here. We're gonna leave our camera type as standard. We'll go ahead and we'll just call this video one and click on save. And then we're gonna leave it with the web M. Uh, we'll leave the resolution mode. So I may bump this up a little bit like this. And so then we're just gonna click on the button to export. What that's gonna do is that's gonna come through and that's gonna render out your uh, still images for each one of the frames. So for this four second long video, and then it's gonna stitch it together into a video that we can watch. So we're gonna let this work for a second and then we'll come back and take a look at the result. And so now if you go in that folder and double click on this, you've got your rendered animation in here that you were able to create really quickly using V-Ray Vision. And so remember, you could also do things like saving your sun location. So let's say you had your sun right here for your first scene. And then you wanted your second scene. Let's say you wanted this to have the same camera view, but like a different sun location like this. So maybe something like this, right? You could update that scene so then what that would do is that would export a sun animation. So we would do the same process as we did before, but this time it would just be your sun location moving. So you can animate different properties inside of SketchUp as well, and then export the, them to Vision. All right, and then finally, because I know this video is getting a little bit long, but um, you can also export a standalone application. So basically what that means is you can click on this button right here to export this, and we're just gonna call this um, Box House but you can click the save button and this will actually package everything up into an exe file that people can open up and they can actually fly around in it without actually having V-Ray. So we're gonna let this work for just a second. All right, and so what this did is this exported this as an exe file. And if I double click on it and open it up, what it's gonna do is that's gonna open up the standalone viewer that you can use to fly around this scene. All right, and so you can see what this does is this standalone, um, I have closed SketchUp and everything else, but this standalone viewer allows you to actually fly around this scene in 3D without actually having V-Ray on your computer. So 
I can go into like first person mode like this. I can also hold the shift key and adjust the shadows and change the sun location and other things like that as well. So I think you can also export images from this. So even if you're an external user and you want to export some still images or you want to adjust your exposure, other things like that, you can do that from inside of this tool. So this can be a really great um, communication tool for sharing your different renderings from V-Ray to external users. So if you are interested in V-Ray, I will link to that on this page, as well as a tutorial on Chaos Cosmos, their online material library. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.